नमस्कार अ वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज प्रशांत कुमार सिन्हा एंड विथ मी इज रेशमा तिवारी ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिंसेज ऑफ मेजर डेवलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शुड ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमिक्स स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर As the world fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin the program with a message of caution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps: wear a face mask, maintain social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. The headlines: Prime Minister Narendra Modi says from LAC to LOC, world is witnessing powerful self-reliant India as dreamt by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. WHO chief lauds India for its role in the global response against COVID pandemic. Covax initiative signs agreement with Pfizer for 40 million doses of covid vaccine to poor and lower middle income countries. US Senate agrees to push back former president Trump's impeachment trial by 2 weeks. Portugal to elect its new president on Sunday amid coronavirus lockdown and in tennis Andy Murray withdraws from the Australian Open. India paid homage to its great freedom fighter Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose on his birth anniversary on Saturday. It was on this day in 1897 that Netaji was born in Katak, Odisha. The year-long celebrations to commemorate the 125th birth anniversary year of Netaji also began today. The Indian government has decided to celebrate the birth anniversary of Netaji as Parakram Divas every year. जो संघर्ष से डरे नहीं अजय ब्रिटिश हुकूमत को हराने जो स्वयं वज्र बन गए स्वतंत्रता संग्राम के वीर अमर सेनानी नेताजी सुभाष चंद्र बोस को 23 जनवरी उनके जन्म दिवस अर्थात पराक्रम दिवस पर कृतज्ञ राष्ट्र का शत शत नमन During the freedom struggle, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose stressed on the need to unite against British rule. He appealed to the countrymen to fulfill their duties towards India. ये रास्ता की हमें अपना खून बहाना है हमें कुर्बानी उठाना है सब रुकावटें का सामना करना है आप इनमें कामयाब करें इस रास्ते में हम सारी हम सब सलाम है हमारे हाथ में यहां है क्या हमारे रास्ते में आएगी भूख क्या तकलीफें भी बदे मौत कोई नहीं कह सकता है जिन लोग इस जंग में शरीक होंगे उनसे कितने लोग निकलेंगे जिंदा हो कोई बात नहीं है हम जिंदा रहेंगे या तो मरेंगे कोई बात नहीं है बात कोई सही बात यह है आम बात यह है आज दिन में हमारी कामयाबी होगी इनो सलाह बात होगा Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that from LAC to LOC the world is witnessing a powerful self-reliant India that was once dreamt by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. He told that India today is giving a befitting reply wherever attempts are made to challenge its sovereignty. Mr Modi was addressing the gathering at Victoria Memorial in Kolkata on Saturday after inaugurating Parakram Divas celebrations. Parakram Divas celebrations mark the 125th birth anniversary year of Netaji across the country. The Prime Minister said that Netaji dreamt of making India self-reliant and he would have been proud to see India advancing towards achieving the target. 125 वर्ष पहले आज के ही दिन मां भारती की गोद में उस वीर सपूत ने जन्म लिया था जिसने आजाद भारत के सपने को नई दिशा दी थी आज के ही दिन गुलामी के अंधेरे में वो चेतना फूटी थी जिसने दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी सत्ता के सामने खड़े होकर कहा था मैं तुमसे आजादी मांगूंगा नहीं आजादी छीन लूंगा आज के दिन सिर्फ नेताजी सुभाष का जन्म ही नहीं हुआ था बल्कि आज भारत के नए आत्म गौरव का जन्म हुआ था भारत के नए सैन्य कौशल्य का जन्म हुआ था मैं आज कृतज्ञ राष्ट्र की तरफ से इस महापुरुष को कोटि कोटि प्रणाम करता हूं उन्हें सैल्यूट करता हूं इसने ये भी तय किया है कि अब हर साल हम 
नेताजी की जयंती यानी तेईस जनवरी को पराक्रम दिवस के रूप में मनाया करेंगे हमारे नेताजी भारत के पराक्रम की प्रतिमूर्ति भी है और प्रेरणा भी है Recalling his sacrifice and contribution to India the prime minister said it is our duty to keep remembering him as Netaji is an inspiration for the country's courage Mr Modi said when the country is entering 75 years of its independence this year when the country is moving forward with the resolve of self-reliant India then Netaji's life his work his indomitable spirit and his decision are a source of inspiration for all of us इस वर्ष देश अपनी आजादी के 75 वर्ष में प्रवेश करने वाला है जब देश आत्मनिर्भर भारत के संकल्प के साथ आगे बढ़ रहा है तब नेताजी का जीवन उनका हर कार्य उनका हर फैसला हम सभी के लिए बहुत बड़ी प्रेरणा है The Prime Minister said Netaji shook the consciousness of Indians living abroad and made the people of every caste, creed and every region from all over the country a soldier of the country. praising the way india is fighting the covid pandemic and helping neighboring countries by supplying covid-19 vaccines the prime minister said as netaji played the similar role for the freedom of india praising netaji's leadership and vision mr modi said that netaji created an all women regiment the regiment of jhansi ki rani at a time when people were expressing doubt in the capability of women उनके जैसे फौलादी इरादों वाले व्यक्तित्व के लिए असंभव कुछ भी नहीं था उन्होंने विदेश में जाकर देश से बाहर रहने वाले भारतीयों की चेतना को जगजोरा उन्होंने आजादी के लिए आजाद हिंद फौज को मजबूत किया उन्होंने पूरे देश से हर जाति पंथ हर क्षेत्र के लोगों को देश का सैनिक बनाया उस दौर में जब दुनिया महिलाओं के सामान्य अधिकारों पर ही चर्चा कर रही थी नेताजी ने रानी जासी रेजिमेंट बनाकर महिलाओं को अपने साथ जोड़ा उन्होंने फौज के सैनिकों को आधुनिक युद्ध के लिए ट्रेनिंग दी उन्हें देश के लिए जीने का जज्बा दिया देश के लिए मरने का मकसद दिया The government has said that more than 1.5 million beneficiaries have been vaccinated for COVID-19 to today across the country. Briefing media on COVID vaccine, Additional Health Secretary Dr. Manohar Agnani said the hospitalization against vaccination is only 0.0007%. Mr. Agnani said six deaths have been reported till date and none of these deaths have been causally linked with COVID-19 vaccination. As on 23 January 2021, a total of 15 lakh 37,190 beneficiaries have been vaccinated for COVID-19, and for which a total of 27,776 sessions have been held. Another highlight is that in states and UTs, prominent doctors, after getting vaccinated, are becoming part of the communication campaign. Meanwhile a training of immunization program managers of 13 foreign countries including Bahrain, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Brazil, Maldives, Mauritius, Myanmar, Nepal and Sri Lanka using Indian vaccine has been successfully conducted by the ministry. World Health Organization WHO chief Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus has expressed gratitude to India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi for continued support to the global COVID-19 response against the pandemic. In a tweet the WHO chief said only if we act together including sharing of knowledge we can stop this virus and save lives and livelihoods. The World Health Organization has announced the signing of an advance purchase agreement securing up to 40 million doses of the Pfizer BioNTech COVID vaccine. The move is a part of the UN-led COVAX equitable vaccine supply program. The WHO said it would be able to start delivering vaccines to poor and lower middle income countries next month under the COVAX program. Pfizer's vaccine is so far the only one that has WHO emergency approval. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said that the new agreement with Pfizer should allow vaccinations to begin in February for health workers. Mr. Tedros said the urgent and equitable rollout of vaccines is not just a moral imperative, it's also a strategic and economic imperative. The WHO chief hoped that the agreement with Pfizer would help to enable COVAX to save lives, stabilize health systems and drive the global economic recovery. He said it would also encourage other countries to donate more of their Pfizer shots to support rapid rollout. 
The U.S. Senate on Friday voted overwhelmingly to confirm retired Army General Lloyd Austin as President Joe Biden's Defense Secretary. Lawmakers from both parties said they were pleased that Austin would be heading the Pentagon. Meanwhile, the U.S. Senate Finance Committee has unanimously approved Janet Yellen's nomination as the first woman Treasury Secretary. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has said that the full Senate would vote on Yellen's nomination on Monday. The leaders of the U.S. Senate have agreed to push back former Pre- President Donald Trump's impeachment trial by two weeks. This will give the chamber more time to focus on President Joe Biden's legislative agenda and cabinet nom- nominees before turning to the contentious showdown over Trump. The House of Representatives last week charged Mr. Trump with inciting a deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol, paving the way for a Senate trial. If convicted, he would be barred from future office. Portugal will elect a new president on Sunday amid a surge in coronavirus cases. Voting is the only reason people are permitted to leave home for anything other than essential work or trips under the current nationwide lockdown rules. According to Portugal's constitution, elections cannot be postponed during a state of emergency. The government is easing lockdown restrictions to allow citizens to cast votes. In Portugal, most executive power lies with the government. However, the president can order parliament or the Supreme Court to review legislation. China continued to record a steady rise in COVID-19 cases on Saturday as it completes a year since Wuhan went into lockdown on the 23rd of January 2020. The novel coronavirus was detected first in Wuhan in late 2019. The National Health Commission said 206 new COVID-19 cases have been identified in the mainland on Saturday, out of which 90 new cases were local infections. The new, more infectious UK strain has also been detected in at least four cities. This comes just before the Lunar New Year festivities when migrant workers all over China expect to head home to celebrate the holiday with their families. The movement involving some 200 million people is humanity's biggest annual migration. Authorities are wary of a new surge surrounding next month's Lunar New Year holiday and have urged people not to travel and to avoid gatherings as much as possible. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani has said that it will begin the COVID-19 vaccinations in the coming weeks. UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said that there was evidence that a new variant of COVID-19 discovered late last year could be associated with higher mortality. Johnson said, however, all the current evidence showed both vaccines remained effective against old and new variants. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. As the nation is today paying homage to great freedom fighter Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose on his birth anniversary, let's listen to our special program on the life and times of Netaji. A salute to the pride of free India. It is not merely a salute, but a reverberation of the pride of the nation. For the first time in the history of India, these two words were coined by the then residents of Madras, C. Pillai. Call it a coincidence that in 1933, Pillai was in Europe and he had a chance meeting with Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose in Austria. Pillai's unique salutation for the freedom movement touched the chord with Netaji and Jai Hind became the proverbial victory sound of India's freedom. We have been fighting for the freedom of the country for the freedom of the country and we will continue to be able to achieve the freedom of the country. We have been fighting for the freedom of the country and we have been fighting for the freedom of the country. दिशाओं में बिखरी सारी ताकत जितना शीघ्र हम केंद्रित कर सकेंगे उतना ही जल्द हम आजादी हासिल कर सकेंगे हमारे सामने इस वक्त सबसे बड़ी समस्या संघ शासन विधान को हमेशा के लिए दफना देने की है तभी हम अपने मन के मुताबिक अपना शासन विधान तैयार कर सकेंगे वर्तमान शासन विधान तो हमारी मर्जी की खिलाफ साम्राज्यवाद को मजबूत कर हमारी 
गुलामी की जंजीरों को और मजबूत करने के लिए बनाया गया है इसे आप हरगि स्वीकार न करें आप संगठित शक्ति से आत्म बलिदान करने के लिए जल्द से जल्द तैयार हो जाइए न मालूम कब बिगुल बज उठे वेन एवर वी टॉक अबाउट सुभाष चंद्र बोस हिज फेमस स्लोगन यू गेव मी ब्लाड आई विल गिव यू इंडिपेंडेंस और तुम मुझे खून दो मैं तुम्हें आजादी दूंगा जिस कम्स टू माइंड द स्लोगन बिच वॉज ए पार्ट ऑफ वन ऑफ हिज स्पीच बिकेम अ सोर्स ऑफ इंस्पिरेशन फॉर दोज हु फॉट फॉर द फ्रीडम ऑफ इंडिया द ओकेजन वॉज ऑन द ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ दिसंबर नाइनटीन फोर्टी फोर वेन नेताजी रिमेम्बर द मर्टर्स ऑफ द इंडियन नेशनल आर्मी और द आजाद हिंद फौज हेयर आर द वर्ड्स ऑफ नेताजी रिक्रिएटेड फॉर आर लिसनर्स I am overjoyed to see that you have already realized that the responsibility of winning freedom does not rest merely on the shoulders of our countrymen at home. It is but natural that they should bear the brunt of the burden and they have been doing so already. But at the same time every Indian no matter where he may be living at the present time has a duty towards his country. and he must contribute his due share towards this final victory Born on the 23rd of January 1897 in Katak, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was a revolutionary. Patriotism was his ha- hallmark, and he made it a point to ensure the freedom of India. Since his childhood days, he was very much disturbed by the slavery of India under the Britishers. In fact, it acted as a catalyst for him to dedicate himself for the liberation of India from British rule. Addressing the Azad Hind Forge, Netaji expressed his angst and the quest for independence. Subhash Chandra Bose had all the qualities of a leader which became visible from his college days. After completing primary education at the Protestant school in Cuttack, he joined Reverend Shaw Collegiate School in 1909. According to Netaji's biographers, Bedi Madhav Das, the principal of Reverend Shaw School, left a deep impact on the minds of young subhash the impact was so powerful that by the age of 15 years he had gone through the entire literary works of swami vivekananda in 1916 netaji took admission at the presidency college kolkata during a fight between teachers and students at the college on some issues netaji took over the leadership of students it led to his expulsion from the college but he was unruffled His next destination was Cambridge. In the open environment in Britain, his quest for independence gathered momentum. Netaji then qualified for civil services but refused to serve under the British government. Renowned historian Kapil Kapoor says this is a reflection of how fiercely he was thinking about a free India out of the slavery of British government. While residing in Britain Netaji was very much influenced by the views of Gandhi ji he returned to India in 1921 and met Mahatma Gandhi in Mumbai on the 20th of July in 1921 Gandhi ji advised him to return to Kolkata and work with Deshbandhu Chitranjan Das after this Netaji took plunge in the freedom struggle his leadership and strategic thinking made him the favorite of the youth engaged in the freedom movement abhi to hum ichha rakhte hue bhi हिंदुस्तान के बाहर उपनिवेशों में बसे हुए अपने भाइयों की मदद नहीं कर सकते वे भी हमारे ही खून है हम उन्हें भला कैसे भूल सकते हैं भारत आज चिरकालीन शोषण के कारण दरिद्रता की चक्की में पीस रहा है महामारी आदि बीमारियों का भारत घर हो रहा है निरक्षरता अभी फैली हुई है वैज्ञानिक साधन हमें मुस्तर नहीं जिससे खेती की उन्नति कर सके दो शाम रोटी मुहाल है इन सब कुरोगों की एकमात्र रामबान औषधि आजादी है वो राष्ट्रीय एकता पर निर्भर करती है असंगठित और कमजोर रहना पाप है गुलामी सब कष्टों और पापों की जड़ है अब गुलामी की जंजीरों को तोड़ने के लिए एक दिल एक प्राण होकर कटिबद्ध हो जाइए हिंदुस्तान अब गुलाम नहीं रह सकता और न कोई ताकत इसे गुलाम रखी सकती है हाँ हमें स्वतंत्रता का मूल्य चुकाना होगा आप इसके लिए तैयार हो जाइए जिससे यदि हम गुलाम हिंदुस्तान में पैदा हुए हैं तो स्वतंत्र हिंदुस्तान में जीवे और मरे कभी 
आजाद हिंदुस्तान दुनिया को नए नए संदेश दे सकेगा नेताजी स्टार्टेड इंडिपेंडेंट लीग फॉर द यूथ विथ जवाहर लाल नेहरू इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी सेवन द इंडिपेंडेंट लीग ऑर्गेनाइज नेशन बाई प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द विजिट ऑफ द साइमन कमीशन टू इंडिया सुभाष चंद्र बोस लेट द प्रोटेस्ट मार्च अगेंस्ट द साइमन कमीशन इन कोलकाता आई बिलीव दैट द एशियाटिक नेशन एंड पिटिकुलर इंडियन And may I therefore offer my congratulations to you on having such a leader in a war crisis to lead you on to victory, and at the same time to carry on the work of reconstruction. Frequent imprisonments took a toll on the health of Netaji during this period. In 1931, the death sentence of Bhagat Singh and lack of active organized efforts by Mahatma Gandhi to ensure his release from the jail hurt Netaji a lot. He started thinking along the lines of how to fight the Britishers and ensure the freedom of India. Subhash Chandra Bose thought that it will be wise to take the help of the enemies of the Britishers, Hitler and Mussolini in the freedom movement. At the same time, he gave up on the non-violent movement of Gandhi ji. Subhash Chandra Bose then visited Europe during 1933 to 1936. He met Mussolini in Italy and De Valera in Ireland and sought their support for India's freedom struggle. Backed by his leadership qualities and strategic thinking, in no time Subhash Chandra Bose became one of the most powerful Congress leaders. In the beginning, he worked with Gandhi ji. However, his stature became so big that in 1938, Haripura Congress session, Neta ji defeated Gandhi ji's candidate Patta Bhi Sita Ramaya to become the Congress president. After this, the distance between Neta ji and Gandhi ji increased both in terms of thinking as well as ideology. it culminated with netaji's resignation from the congress historian makan lal says talks about the nationalistic ideals of netaji netaji's personality is reflected in new dimensions after his separation from the congress in 1939 he founded the forward block and hereafter a revolutionary change emerges in the thinking of subhash chandra bose it will be prudent to recall that he was a leader of the garam dal in the congress however after separating from the congress he lost faith in peaceful struggle for freedom his belief in armed struggle increased tremendously as well as his thinking became too deep to understand the soul of india prime minister modi remembered netaji's thinking on the 75th anniversary of the azad hind sarkar The year 1939 has written script to change the world. The British government grew suspicious of the revolutionary Subhash Chandra Bose at the beginning of the World War II. He was detained. Subhash Chandra Bose took detention as an opportunity. He left home in disguise and reached Germany up via Afghanistan and the Soviet Union. In Germany, he started gathering support for the freedom struggle and met Hitler on the 29th of May in 1942. On not getting enough assurance of support from Hitler, he left for East Asia in a submarine and reached indonesia there he met revolutionary leader ras bihari bose and on his insistence he took command of azad hind forge on this occasion he enumerated important points on the freedom of india from there netaji started to struggle for freedom of india those days japan was fighting the british netaji wanted the cooperation of japan for country's freedom impressed by the personality of netaji the prime minister of japan assured his support Netaji addressed Japan parliament during this period. His speech left the Japanese people spellbound and he became the darling of Japan. Reaching Singapore, he founded Azad Hind Forge on 21st October 1943. In 2018, Prime Minister Modi remembered the country's first vernacular government. Azad Hind Sarkar akhand Bharat ki sarkar thi, avibhajit Bharat ki sarkar thi. Main deshwasiyon ko आजाद हिंद सरकार के 75 वर्ष होने पर बहुत बहुत बधाई देता हूं साथियों अपने लक्ष्य प्रति जिस व्यक्ति का इतना साफ विजन था लक्ष्य को हासिल करने के लिए जो अपना सब कुछ दांव पर लगाने के लिए निकल गया हो जो सिर्फ और सिर्फ देश के लिए समर्पित हो ऐसे व्यक्ति को याद करने भर से ही पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी प्रेरित हो जाती है 
Netaji started armed struggle for freedom with the help of Japan. During this, he was given the call Dilli Chalo. Under his leadership and with the help of Japanese army, Azad Hind Fort succeeded in liberating Andaman Nicobar Islands on 30th September 1943. During this struggle he reached Burma on 4th July 1944 and started fighting the Britishers at Indian borders. In between Azad Hind Forge attacked Imphal and Kohima. Very few people know that Netaji had first called Gandhi ji as Rashtrapita. He had addressed Gandhi ji on the 6th of July 1944 in a radio broadcast and advanced reasons for armed struggle. being right here netaji was an advocate of making east asia a powerful group as the british forces started to dominate the ina had to retreat meanwhile japan was defeated after america dropped atomic bombs on nagasaki and hiroshima but netaji decided to seek cooperation from russia to achieve his goal in this connection he was going to russia from manchuria on the 8th of 18th of august in 1945 it is said that his plane crashed during this journey according to japanese radio this hero of the indian independence movement succumbed in this accident there are innumerable stories on netaji which are yet to come out with the efforts of prime minister modi more than 1000 documents related to netaji have now been made public they can be seen in the national archives According to a document Netaji's last words were tell people that I fought for the independence of my country till the last breath this fight needs to continue and I'm confident that India will soon be free no one can keep India a slave now Netaji's armed struggle may not have been successful during his lifetime but a year after his death the Indian Navy revolted in 1946 which resulted in India's independence Whenever India's independence will be discussed Netaji's powerful words will keep reverberating and his struggle will be remembered उन्होंने हमें वो ताकत वो जोश और वो साहस दिए जिससे हम अपने हमवतनों की पूरी पूरी मर्जी के मुताबिक लड़ाई लड़े और हिंदुस्तान को आजादी को ये काम अगर करना है इस डिविजनल भाव में जब टीम का कायम करना है हिंदुस्तान के पास हो सकता है अंदर नहीं और अब देखेंगे कि दुनिया की तारीख में भी ये नई बात नहीं है दूसरे इंकलाब ने इस जंग में देखो स्वैन ने क्या किया उन्होंने पैरिस और लंदन में जाकर Tropical cyclone Eloise made landfall in the coastal city of Beira of Mozambique early on Saturday. It hit the coastal city with huge gusts of winds and heavy rains, but was losing strength as it progressed. Ambazi Maliaj, forecaster at South African Weather Service, said that the cyclone has been downgraded to a moderate tropical storm with wind speeds of between 90 to 100 kilometers per hour. It was expected to weaken further as it enters northern parts of South Africa. The World Meteorological Organization (WHO) late on Friday had upgraded the storm to a tropical cyclone with equivalent strength to a category 2 storm with maximum wind speeds of 154 to 177 kilometers per hour. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. New York Times has reported that health officials in the US are frustrated that hospitals are running out of vaccines. The Guardian writes that impeachment trial of Donald Trump will begin in the week of 8th of February. And Gulf News has reported that Twitter has suspended an account linked to Iran's supreme leader after an apparent threat to Donald Trump. Moving on to sports, in tennis Andy Murray has decided to opt out of Australian Open. He has opted out as he could not find a way to have workable quarantine. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says from LAC to LOC world is witnessing powerful self-reliant India as dreamt by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. WHO chief lauds India for its role in global response against COVID pandemic. Covax initiative signs agreement with Pfizer for 40 million doses of COVID vaccine to poor and lower middle income countries. US Senate agrees to push back former President Trump's impeachment trial by 2 weeks. Portugal to elect its new president on Sunday amid coronavirus lockdown and in tennis Andy Murray withdraws from the Australian Open. Before we end the bulletin let's listen to the INA anthem that motivated millions of our freedom fighters and generations of Indian youth. That we end this bulletin.